So good morning, active traders, and welcome to our Trading Week Ahead broadcast. I've been doing these for 15 years. I'm Ken Calhoun, president of TradeMastery.com and a money show speaker and award-winning Stocks and Commodities magazine columnist with my Trading on Momentum column appearing in every single issue. And I'm, I, I have to write an article this week, and I'm a little behind on this uh, current one. Anyway, what about these markets? It's been quite the volatile session here this last week. We've had strength in Bitcoin and gold, okay, as people are looking for alternate hedges for the inflation rampant uh, dollar, uh, people looking at other ways to hedge their money. So they're throwing, them, uh, throwing dollars into Bitcoin and gold lately as inflation hedges. So there's that as a sector dy dynamic. The more important dynamic is weakness and financial. This market is about to crash. It'd be a really smart idea to get out of, in my humble, this is not trade recommendations, this is all for educational use only. Uh, don't make trading uh, decisions based on what I say. Go check with a registered investment advisor and see how that works out for you. Anyway, um, that, the correct thing to trade right now is FAZ. That's how you short banking. All right, this is FAZ. It's a triple leveraged exchange traded fund, and it goes up when banking and finance go down. Now, because of the uh, SVB and Credit Suisse, uh, failures. Uh, I'm 100% sure uh, it's not going to end well. I think we're going to have contagion. Uh, a number of other banks will fail. Uh, we'll have a run on the banking system, and it's going to all hit the fan. So it's a really good idea to profit potentially from the upcoming crash by going long in inverses that go up when the market goes down. You can also buy, uh, uh, how to say, buy the breakout at new highs in this. And you can also play options. You know, if you're going to play uh, options accordingly. Uh, I want to buy some puts in the uh, indices or by uh, calls in the inverses, right, for weeklies. Anyway, FAZ looks fantastic. This is my number one pick. Uh, remember I said this when it's up at 50 in about a week or two, right? Remember I said, well, maybe two weeks. Uh, it'll probably be 35 to 38. Anyway, keep an eye on FAZ if it does take out 26. You guys know how good my calls are. I'm a shot caller. I know how to do this. Keep an eye on FAZ. Now, what else do we have? Let's see. Um, one thing I think is probably a really smart idea is to change my background. So instead of a music stage, it looks a little more on topic. Let me do that for us right quick, and we're good to go. Like magic. Boom. Monitors. That's what my monitors look like flipped backwards. So I took a video of this and then that, and used that as a virtual background. Anyways. Let's get on with it already. What's going on with this dang market? Let's uh, flip quickly through. That's the most important intel is short the market, especially with finance. All right. Second tip, we are still in a downtrend. You guys remember on this Saturday, the Saturday after that Friday, I said to short the market and that that would be a false breakout and kind of a bear market rally. I was correct. We had a shooting star on Monday and the market crashed for the next week and a half. Similarly, I told my traders on Thursday to fade the market on Friday, and we'd have a red day. And that was sure enough the case. Uh, this is greens are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Red was Friday at a mean reversion pullback to the midpoint of the Thursday. And I fully expect we will take out the 3,800 in the S&P by Friday, and then some, all right? I think we're gonna have an extremely red week next week. It'll make this look like, like nothing, right? If you take a look at the, Kind of rough out a channel here. I'm a big fan of Carter Worth on CNBC because uh, he uses channels a lot. And I, I completely agree with his approach. I think it's very smart because it bounds the data set. It defines the boundaries, the borders of the data set. And unlike our porous south border, uh, we often see good, strong uh, pivots off of our borders uh, from a technical analysis of our stocks market. Anyway, so we bounced off the lower border on Monday. We bounced off or pulled back off the upper border on Friday. Or I should say Thursday on Friday. Anyway, the point is we've been seesawing up and down within that channel. It's very likely to go down next week. So we'll take a look at some charts here. Let's start with the VIX. Now, if any of you good folks have uh, charts you'd like me to pull up, yeah, this is a list already. We have AGI down to SARC that you guys have already posted just this last few minutes. If any of you have a ticker that you'd like me to pull up today, go ahead and type it in the, the, uh, the box here, and we will take a look at that. 
All right, so what's the story of our VIX? Our Seabill Volatility Index uh, is up at 25 and a half, which is significantly above the 22. Remember, as long as the VIX stays over 22, you want to have a short bias in the market. As long as the VIX stays over 22, that's two twos, you want to be short the market, right? So, uh, and also another uh, kind of a, it's a little known strategy, but one thing to look at is the ratio of green to red candles and the, and the height of the range of the candles. Uh, what's the story of the last seven days of the VIX, right? It's uh, five out of seven are green and they're all relatively large green candles. So that's extremely bearish for the stock market. Uh, that does not escape the notice of people like, uh, like I used to have institutional clients. Uh, that's the kind of thing that we look at uh, from a uh, algorithmic standpoint is what's the range and the direction, right? And so we have a directional move up here, which is bearish for the stock market. More importantly, we have a lot of large green candles in the VIX, okay? You'll not hear anyone else in the world unless competitors are watching this copy me. Of course, they always do, but you heard it here first. Uh, we have large green candles in the VIX above a key resistance area. That's an exceptionally strong short signal or bearish signal in the stock market. Uh, so as long as our VIX stays over 22, we stay short, and we do that with our in inverse ETFs. My favorite of those being FAZ right now because that's uh, that will uh, benefit us if the finance and banking sector continues to have contagion from the SVB and Credit Suisse uh, fallout, and we're likely to see continued sell pressure in our finance and banking sector, and FAZ is a key uh, way to trade that or to benefit from that. Now, one thing that I like to look at is the longer term upside. So just, and this is helps in uh, identifying targets. Where's it gonna go? Well, kind of hard to see here, but previously, and uh, quite a couple a couple years back, the split adjusted price of this was what five six hundred a share. It's currently on sale for the low low price of under fifty. So if you take a look at that volatility. It had been up at split adjusted 500 a share. It's coming in off a all-time low base in the teens. It broke over the 20. It's headed for 30 next. The strategy to scale in that I would like to recommend you consider paper trading uh, to learn is to go in long above at least every, say, $5 up for now, and then make it every $10. So let's just simplify every $10. So Put in a position here over 26, but then over the 30, then above the 40, and the 50, and the 60, and so forth. Uh, so you want to scale in over the upcoming months ahead uh, for a position or a long-term swing, and things that go up when the finance sector goes down. That makes sense. Let's take a look at some charts. Oh, wow, a lot of charts. Oh, wow, you guys are posting a lot. I have to scroll down. Thank you so much. See, someone's asking FedEx. We have the gold ones already, SLV. So do let me know your tickers right now, and I will spend most of this morning's broadcast going over your charts. Yeah, we have coin in all inverses, right, Brian? Let's see. A couple of you are asking about A and ET and GE. Let's see. We will go over all of these. Again, if you have questions, uh, don't click the raise hand. Wow, I love people or hundreds of people are. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it, guys. I'll give you my best shot. We'll see what we got coming up here. I'm negative. I'm wildly negative on all finance. Short this market. The market's going to crash. Our economy is in trouble. You want to not, hey, let's bottom fish with good quality selling. No, epic fail. Short the market is what I'm doing. Watch and see. You've seen how correct I've been on my calls, right? Over the last 15, 20 years. Very accurate. So, but you'll see. Yeah, you'll see. Remember when I said to go long cold at 21? I, that's where I've traded. I bought 21. I sold 63. I tripled my money. In a real money trading account. So, no less. So that's good. Thanks, everybody, for all the tickers. Keeps it interesting for us. Another Bitcoin play, right? I like coin better, but. And marathon, M A R E. Anyway, so what do we have here? Let's take a look at our charts. 
Anyway, cold, this is the one where I bought at 21, and I here in this Saturday events, remember I, told, I was telling you guys 21, and then again over 35. Those are the two break points, 21, 35, and then sell the 63. That was right. It spiked up a little further, then it crashed down all the way down to 40-ish, 41. It's been on the mend ever since. Cold may be okay, but it's just, it's just okay, though. There's better charts out there. Uh, CBA has been a long-time favorite. It's finally waking up again, and it may be good over the 10. Coin has been really good for us. I nailed the calls for our live room members yesterday. For all of you who are live room members, let's see, where's my call? 72.7. Yeah, so I ran up there. This is Coinbase, C-O-I-N. Had a pretty good run to the upside yesterday. Lots of charts. Anyway. We'll get back to our swing trading charts right here. That's the day trading charts. I like to use the uh, two-day, one-minute chart for intraday so that I can see exactly what's going on. So none of these are exceptionally impressive yet. These are all just okay, but do keep an eye on them. Uh, Tilray, pot stock, uh, finally a big day on Thursday, right? So uh, T-L-R-Y, maybe a pivot play, but still FAZ, my favorite. Now let's take a look at these charts. These are charts that you folks would mention. Uh, AGI, I really like that for a day trading chart. I wouldn't look for a swing unless it breaks out above new highs, but it had a really good range yesterday for it. That's a good 10, 7, 11, 4. 70 cents on $11 stock is fine for day trading. AGL, that's good for a swing trade. That'll play. The first thing you want to look at, I'm not just a, you know randomly saying that it's good or not. The first thing I evaluate professionally is the range. So I look on the right side of the chart and what's the range? And then, for example, this one, range is 15 to 27. Uh, a two X range is usually a really good idea. And this is a good example of one that does that from 15 to 27. Uh, so it almost doubled, right? So that's good. A really good chart. I like the range. I don't like the depth of the pullback cups, uh, but I do like the range and the volatility. So that's pretty good. See what well, someone wants to know about Disney. Uh, the Magic Kingdom doesn't, the stock doesn't look too good here. Um, nope. Let's see, UNH, nope. Walmart, of course not. Didn't have time to look at Costco. Micron, I like the Thursday bounce, and the range is okay. It's an okay chart. Uh, I think Steve had asked about this one. It's just okay. I, there's better places to allocate capital, so uh, I would not, I would not play that one. Let's see, MCRB. That is a horrible chart. How would you trade this? How could you possibly make money trading this and not get stopped out? In what universe would this be easy to trade? If it's choppy and fuzzy, just say no. Let's see, dear. Oh, that's a horrible chart. T and K. That's okay. That's got a nice clean run, which is what we like. But since it's in pullback territory now, mm, eh. It's been under sell pressure. It'd be a short under 40, which would be my official first place, uh, first pick. That's not a trade recommendation, but short in this under 40 would be the play on that. Went up by that long. MLTX. Now that's a much better chart for long. So that's a good one. That one's actually fairly healthy. Uh, over 26, right? It's a really good run. Uh, and the range, again, look at the right side of the chart. Is it one and a half or twice uh, the range? And this one is nine to 25. It's almost a tripler, right? Uh, almost went triple up. So that's really good. That's a good chart. That one will pass. That's the best chart you guys came up with so far today. Thank you. ARDX. That's okay. Yeah, that's, that's good, actually. And for a cheap chart, that was good. The range is good. I like the fact that it did a gap continuation with an ascending triangle resistance of 420. We have a shooting star there on the day after the gap. Uh, so that marks out that delineates the resistance of 420. And again, for candlestick training, be sure to exclusively go to my colleague Steve Nissen's candlecharts.com site. He's brilliant. Uh, what he teaches is very, very smart. Uh, so uh, anyway, shooting star, go long over the 42. Okay, but yeah, it's a for a cheap chart, that one's good. That'll pass. That'll play. ARKK. That's a horrible chart. It doesn't, it fails the two to one ratio on the right, only 29 to not 58, but 46. It's had a choppy downtrend. Uh, you, I would almost certainly get stopped out tra trying to trade that. Ask yourself, what are the odds that you'll make money with this chart or Wall Street will make money off of you with the stop loss? 
that would be this chart. So you're fired. Echo, you're fired. Oh, man. Anyway, I digress. SARK, nope. F FedEx. I like the gap, but it's too uncertain. The price action in that chart would be very difficult to trade. Remember, you want to trade charts that are easy to make money or relatively easy to potentially make money with. When they're all over the map like this, and it's up and down, it's, it's inconsistent. So for an investment, absolutely, probably good. But for a trader, nah, I'd get stopped out. But it's a good chart, though. See, SLV, that's a horrible chart. Okay, a &A, obviously. Uh, that one's a good chart. That's a great chart. The only thing I don't like is the range is in two to one, but it's good enough. That's good enough. That'll play. That's the kind of chart you want to trade as a trader. Clean, tight, going up. So you want to buy stuff that goes up. Now, I've tried both ways. I've done tens of thousands of bottom fishing bounces. Most of those stop out. Uh, occasionally, you'll get lucky. That's not what you want to do to make bread and butter uh, for traders successfully. What you want is buy high, sell higher. Buy high, scale in. Start small and then scale in on the breakouts to the upside. Now, if you do struggle with stock selection or figuring out what charts are best for you personally, I would highly recommend you book me for uh, just a bargain. I used to charge a thousand an hour for my institutional guys. You folks at home, uh, I cut that way, way down. It's just uh, under two, 195 for a 45 minute session with me. Uh, and I, this is the first time I've offered coaching at this low price in my life. Uh, so if you want to book a spot, you can do that on the site. Uh, you click the schedule it shows you a calendar. Uh, you can pay with PayPal. It schedules Zoom automatically, and you can work with me. The other place to get help is in my community, my live trading room at uh, trademastery.com forward slash live. You can see why so many hundreds of people like being members, uh, because we have a lot of smart people there. Uh, like, uh, uh, well, we have a lot of smart traders. And one of the things that we like to do is focus on specific entries at real-time exit call. So Two ways to work with me. One is in the live room session and others private. So we've got the group coaching, uh, trademastery.com forward slash live. Okay, that's my live room. And then the other way is to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, either on the phone. You know, we can get together on the cell phone. We can talk, um, which is fine. Uh, or we can, and or we can use the uh, Zoom platform and go through your charts and uh, your trades. And I can help you tune up, kind of troubleshoot, kind of be like a mechanic that, gets in there and fixes things for you potentially. So uh, that's a good opportunity to work with me. And it's a bargain. Uh, I will definitely be raising that up to $4.95, uh, probably fall. But uh, for now, uh, for the next few months, to get a lot of people on board and hopefully get a lot of testimonials, because I know, I know people love it. Uh, so uh, I'm fine being very open with my strategy. I lowball the price on the front end so that I can get a lot of great testimonials. Uh, and then I will raise the price later. So hint. It's like a stock price that goes up. Now it's uh, very inexpensive. So it's a good opportunity to book me while I'm available at this uh, low price. And I don't have that many hours available. I'm extremely busy. So, um, but if you do want to book for now, that's the, the low price. So uh, that will definitely be up much higher later in the year. So it had been a thousand for like 15 years. So I just just now dropped it. It's like a gap down in the price at 195. So, okay, back to it. Let's take a look at the charts. Okay, this is a wonderful chart. What is this one? A N E T, I believe. Yeah, A N E T. It's expensive. I don't like trading things that are over 40, 50 bucks a share myself. I like things that are down in you know, 10, 20, $30 a share, maybe 40. Um, I don't like $100 stocks, but if I did, this would be a really good one. Because again, it has a nice 45 degree angle breakout with a nice tight continuous run that sounds good. Johnny, tell them what they want. George, tell them what they want. A brand new SUV. ANAT looks wonderful. That's a great chart, but it's too expensive for my taste. I see FRC. Hmm. That's a distressed banking call. And this would be a, th a thing to short under the 20. Right? Uh, but personally, too much risk. So I'm not going to make any ideas on this. Uh, personally, I would not touch this with a 20 foot pole. Uh, and day trade okay the, the one thing that you would the one thing that you would want to do this is day trade it only uh for potential bounces or drops but something with that extreme of a range a 5x range from 120 to 20 a little risky just a little risky so i take a pass on that for swing trade for day trade sure and by the way that's another quick tip that's a horrible chart you're fired carry 
Oh, that's an even worse term. Why? I mean, are you trying to make money with this? Or are you trying to donate money? I mean, help me understand. Uh, do you want to make money uh, from your trades or do you want to lose money? This would be something you would lose money with, most likely. Like I give eight to, to uh, eight to one odds that you would probably lose money trading this either way. Uh, this is a perfectly horrible chart. Too late to short it uh, and looks horrible for a bounce. So this would be a don't touch it with a 20 foot pole. Boom, you're fired. Echo, you're fired. Add zeus. I better update my resume. You do that, sweetheart. PBR looks awful. This is a terrible chart. That's a stinky chart. Why on earth would you trade that chart? Right, it's great. That's a great chart. Just like a Coinbase and Marathon. I'll go ahead and just trying to put it in up here. Anyway, um, but yeah, right's great. Right's a good a good play. Right, Coinbase, right, Marathon and Coinbase. Actually, thanks. I I, I preferred Coinbase uh, for intraday. Uh, but Riot's uh, an even better chart for swing trading, so that's a good one. And not only is it the cheapest of, or one of the cheaper of the Bitcoin-related uh, stocks, but it's got a, a all-time, or I should say 90-day high uh, behind it. So Riot's good. That'll play. So does that make sense? You start with a list like this, or like this, and you narrow it down to a list of what's most likely to win. Okay, any other tickers? Let's see what we have. Yeah, Trader's saying, I must stop my compulsion. He has to stop his compulsion to donate to the market. Yeah, I agree. That's not a good thing. Let's see. Yeah, Marathon's good too. Any of the Bitcoin for now. One thing that you want to do, okay, we'll take a look at Cisco. The other play is, that's one of the worst all-time charts I've seen in my life. That's a chart that would be terrible to trade. There is no directional volatility. There is no consistent pattern to this. There's a lot of chop and churn. This would be a terrible chart to trade. Are you going to make money trading that, really? Or do you think you'd make money trading like that or this, right? That's a good tradable chart. See, it's going up. It's kind of a hint. If it goes up, you want to trade it. Choppy charts are terrible. Now, recent gainer charts like FAZ are especially good because there's a tremendous upside. It's only been going up a week and a half, right? And that's on the news of SVB fail. That's an SVB slash Credit Suisse short uh, type of uh, thing. Uh, short the banking system with FAZ and new highs. That's my number one call for you guys. Just like I gave you on a silver platter here, I'd mentioned cold would be good over 21. That's where I bought it. And I said to sell the 63. That's where I sold it my life. And that's my interactive broker's account, my IB account. Uh, I trade with Fidelity, IB, and Ameritrade, uh, but mostly with Fidelity. But I put, I thrown a dart at this guy uh, in my IB account. I bought 21, I sold 63. That was a perfect trade. I'm well, not perfect. I guess perfect would buy the 17 and sell the 67 or something. But 21 to 63, that's good enough. It's like 90% of the run because it was going continuously up. The neat thing about charts that go up as opposed to choppy charts that are hard to trade is that you can add to the winning trade and leverage up and scale up. So instead of just being in like two or 300 shares, you might be in five or 600 shares by the time all is said and done and you're ready to sell it. And you can uh, multiply uh, your gains in that particular trade by scaling uh, professionally, so or intelligently. All right, let's see. Oh, some other charts. Okay, what do we got? Thank you, folks. We will take a look. XLE. G E B K T X. Uh, hit me up with your tickers, guys. Wow, big turnout. If you have a stock you'd like me to look at and give you my honest opinion, uh, go ahead and uh, try. You know how good my alerts are, right? So you know if you follow me any length of time. So uh, I know this stuff. I did uh, 140 million uh, order flow last year. My 1099. I'll put that on the front of my Trade Mastery site. Uh, I had it show up somewhere. Let's see. I think that'd be a good credibility boosting thing right now. If, let's see if I can. I'll show you the, the 1099 if I can get the dang. There's PowerPoint icon. Let's remember the, all the different icons. PowerPoint looks like orange and white with a Pac-Man in it or something. Anyway, I'll try and load the uh, 
the PowerPoint slide that I had that I showed when I did a, a presentation for a Metastock with Jeff Gibby and team a couple of weeks back. Let me show you. Hopefully it'll work. This thing's been crashing on Windows 10. Let's see. Nope, unfortunately PowerPoint stopped, okay. Well, sorry about that. I'm not a big PowerPoint fan. You know, people who are supposed trading industry experts who spend a lot of time on PowerPoints, I don't get it. I'm a trader, I work off charts, right? So it's called me silly. Anyway, back to it. Let's take a look at these charts from you guys. So give me your tickers, folks. Let's see, B, A, A, B, haven't done that one. PG and Caterpillar, Procter Gamble and Caterpillar, some good quality games. Yeah, we already covered C Bay. It, you know, oh. Guys, give me some oh, PLG. USO, Oil Long, Nugget, Gold. I like Gold. Bank America and XLI, another ETF, and XLV, another ETF. Yay. We already covered gold. I like gold. Uh, gold glitters, we covered GDX and GDXU. Gold's good for a bounce. Uh, oh, yeah. One thing, here's, here's a counter trend play for you guys. How many people have recognized that we've had a big run in crypto lately right it's well up there's a 26 or something in bitcoin anyway uh, a big run in crypto uh, this is a market in which you trade the extremes the pivots off of extremes so a smart idea that nobody is talking about probably is to consider our inverse bitcoin bitty bitty on a bounce right she went from 40 down to 20 then all the way down to 20 well, 28 then now down to 22. Uh, the play on this would be a reversal. Now, I would not play this unless it gets back over 25. You don't want to speculate because this is catching a falling knife down here. You don't do that. If you catch a falling knife, you get blood on your fingers. So you don't want to do that. But if BITI, remember I said this, it's a brilliant freaking call. If you BITI short Bitcoin by going long over 25 on a pivot, okay, that's, that's another really brilliant call. No one's talking about that. I always think about when things run up and you miss out on it, well, tough noogies. How do you play the pivot? That would be one way to do it. Okay, let's go back to our charts and we'll pick up here. Well, you guys have a lot of charts, thanks. Okay, XLE looks terrible. Um, General Electric, that's actually pretty good for an investor, not so much for, eh, maybe for a trader. It's a good chart, I like it. Yeah. I don't see any, I don't have any violent objections to it at new highs. No, we have a shooting star there with that green uh, chart right here, right? Green. We have a double, not, not just one, but a double shooting star, tweezer top. That's an extremely bearish signal. So you'd want to wait for it to get well over 96 before even thinking about it. But overall, the trend is good. It's a good chart if it's able to blow, blow past those shooting star tops, but not until. This one, uh, that's a good chart. I like it. Yeah, it's got a nice swoop on the tail end on the right side of the cup. What I like about the right side of this chart, the most recent candle, is it's a large green candle compared to the last week worth. So a larger green candle testing a high is a good signal for breakout. The other thing we check is the range. Is it a good risk reward uh, range? Five to 12 is wonderful. That's good. It's over two to one. So that's a good, that's a good one. BKTX, that'll play. PLG, really? You're fired. That's the worst chart. One of the, that's an even worse chart. You guys come up with some real stinkers, but but congratulations. Coming up with charts that suck is a good way to learn what not to do. Okay. If you lose your at, if you lose your money trading, you're probably trading really horrible charts that stink. If you're making money trading, it's because you're trading things that actually go up. That's a horrible chart. Not only is it fail the range test. Uh, might be a short under the 210 or something, but a caterpillar uh, is not going to turn into a butterfly. It looks like it's going to be dead on the vine. Cat looks terrible. How about our oil ETF, USO? That's a horrible chart. How about Nugget? Even worse, the range is terrible. Bank America. That probably gets my word for the worst chart of the day because it's really expensive and it's going nowhere. Kind of like having a trophy wife or something. They're really expensive. She's going to go somewhere with your with your money. Uh, Bank of America. 
Inconceivable. Oh, that's another horrible chart, XLI. Wow, you guys are coming up with some really terrible charts. But that's a good thing, because learning what not to trade is part of your journey as a trader. You know, just as in life, you want to figure out what kind of people to avoid, what kind of situations to stay away from, bad neighborhoods to not go in. You guys are giving me a lot of bad neighborhood, horrible charts that would just blow up your capital. So congratulations. You're learning what not to do. So that's good. Replace that with better charts that actually go up consistently. It just call me silly, but I think that's a smart idea. If it goes up consistently, you buy it. If it chops around, you don't trade it. Even if you're in love with the chart name or something, that would be a terrible idea. These charts are all reasonably good. And these are all from you folks. So these are, these are the, that's probably the best one so far, ain't it? It's expensive, but it's the right kind of chart. That one is terrible. Right is okay. GE is okay. Hmm. So I think of all these, if I had to pick two, I think the VKTX, yeah, let's fire that one. That one's good. That one's good. So let's narrow the list, right? Let's narrow the focus. That one's pretty good. That one's really good, but it's expensive. So I reluctantly, I'll leave it. It's, it's a valid chart. It's just out of my price range. I don't like, you don't get much leverage if you're spending 160 a share, but it's, the range is okay. But yeah, because of that, I'll leave it. I'll reluctantly leave it. We'll see where it goes. Right, it's not as consistent. GE is kind of a slow, expensive one. BKTX is good. That one's a little pricey. So that's the short list. And that's the goal of what you want to do as a trader, what I just demonstrated. Does that make sense? You go through all these charts. You reluctantly let go of some that are like on the fence, but they're not quite great. You just want rock star charts with really good directional volatility that have the potential to make you a boatload of money, right? So charts that go up, maybe they stall and they keep going up, or charts that continuously go up are the charts that you want to focus on. Does that make sense? That's a good professional assessment. If I were being, if you guys were an institutional client on Wall Street, that's my, that would be my list uh, for the next week. Now let's see how well they work out. And these are your folks' charts. These are not mine. These are from the long list of 30 or 40 charts that you guys have given me. That's the short list. Boiled it down to the best of the best. Good stuff. Oh, thanks, Steve. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, bo BA is Boeing, not Bank of America. BAC is Bank of America. That's what I said, right? BAC is Bank of America. I could have been wrong. Anyway, a target for FAZ. That's a smart question. But yeah, if I misspoke, thanks for the correction. I'm getting old. I'm almost 60. I'm 59 years old. How did that happen? So how do we determine the target? Well, you look at the one year and you use 50% of the range of the one year. So the range on this punk is 15 to 33. So it's about a $15 range. Uh, it's gone up seven. Uh, the target on that would be up right under the previous high, right? Uh, 31. So my target on that would be 25 to 31 for the first, well, I'd say if you didn't already get in, right? And I've been telling my traders about this all last two weeks. If you're not one of my live room members, not tough noogies, you missed out. Uh, the next leg, the next episode of the TV series is the run from 26 to 31, maybe 32. Okay, the next range would be over 33, right? Above the 52 week high. So we have the first, like a uh, Darvis box, right? First box range is the, on the one year chart, you divide it just simply in half. And those are the range for exit targets for longer term swings. So for this one, 16 to 25, that's first range. Next range would be 26 to 31. Next range would be say 33 up to 38, 39. So you look at these as though they're, you know, as though they're, they're bricks or something there. They're brick, 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 brick. So you trade within the box range uh, of each of those charts. All right, so let's wrap up here. For today, I wanted to thank you all for being here. Uh, you guys have been great. Uh, again, if you want to join my live room, it's at trademastery.com forward slash live. And if you want to book a call with me, uh, just one ninety five for 45 minutes. Uh, I think that's a really good price. Uh, try to lowest price that makes it worth, worth my while. Uh, and uh, look forward to working with you guys. So trade smart. Uh, I think it's a good idea to short banking, uh, short the whole stock market, but short banking. Uh, there's other ETFs that we look at like SOXS and SQQs and UVXY and the rest of them daily in the live room and uh, oil versus cold for net gas and the rest of it. So we cover, I'd say probably 60% of the coverage is day trading 
uh, ETFs, the leveraged ETFs, and then the 40% is uh, momentum gap runners in our uh, stocks uh, up to around 30, 40 a share. Most of them are like 10, 15, 20 a share. So good coverage for everybody. So let's go ahead and wrap up. Hey, good turn. Hey, it's your thing. So, hey, thanks, Mick. ROIV, let's take a look. Okay, a couple last minute. Hey, Seller. Happy birthday. Let's see. Yeah, it's okay. It's in the rain. But that looks better. That looks really good. That's the best chart pattern, but it's expensive. So, hey. Eh. And you don't have to trade a lot of shares, but that one's okay too. CBay is healthy. I like CBay. CBay is one of the top ones, and our Bitcoins, if they take out new highs as well. That's another good example of a continuously uptrending chart that makes sense to focus on. So, y'all have been great. Thank you so much for sharing your Saturday with me. I know we're running a few minutes later, but we had a lot of questions and all that. So, I'm here for you guys. So, yeah, good idea, Tom, on the buy call options on any of these up at new highs. And take a, um, when it comes to options trading, one of the things is make sure that you look at the spreads and the volume and get preference to the strikes that are uh, either high, high volume strikes uh, or, uh, and or have really tight spreads with high volume, which is usually what you see, right? The more volume, the tighter the spread by definition. So uh, high volume strikes, uh, HVS, that's another options trading strategy I'll be covering for options trader uh, coming up in, uh, in the future. So stay tuned. Uh, you guys take care. Have a great weekend ahead. Uh, make some money out there. Let's go get them. And I hope to work with you in our uh, coaching calls and the live room. So trade smart, and I will see you guys next time. Hasta la vista.